I've been thinking the last couple of weeks about the direction and focus of my channel. I'm sorry that I haven't produced anything, but I didn't want to produce anything that was just junk. There's enough of that. Some of the stuff that I find not useful to me on YouTube are, I guess you'd call them negatives. Um, people who are cruel use slurs and name calling and even insulting people for their physical appearance rather than articulating an argument. Okay. Uh, arrogance. The presumption that um, what I know, what I have experienced, what I have learned is de facto the right perspective. Uh, as an atheist, I don't see any difference between atheists and secular humanists doing that than fundamentalists. Uh, making assumptions about people. Uh, stuff about assumptions about other people that your life experience is the center of the universe so everybody else's life should be like yours. I mean, I'm not saying I don't do it too, but... Oh, um... And the verbal abuse thing. I avoid troll wars. When people say things provocative, sometimes I get sucked into defending myself, but something has shifted in my life and I don't think I need to defend myself. I think that I need to present my facts and my experience as clearly as I can. And if other people choose to not hear that, this isn't a very sex positive comment, but Dorothy Parker was asked to use the word horticulture in a sentence, and this may be apocryphal. And she presumably said, you can lead a horticulture, but you can't make her think. Uh, not very sex positive, but you get the point. I can present the videos, and then it's up to the viewer to either be so absorbed in personal life experience that uh, he or she can't hear what's being presented or to maybe learn something. Oh, all right. I'm a good writer. I'm getting a lot of feedback that I'm a good writer. Now this is, I'm not bragging. All right. This isn't something that I, uh, chose to do. It's something I chose to work on and practice when I found out that I was good at it. It's just a sort of a native talent. Like I have kind of hazily brown eyes. Um, and, uh, to me, that's not about stroking my ego. It's about, I have a voice in communities where a lot of people don't have voices. So to me, it's a responsibility. It's not okay for me to just vent my spleen and vomit in public and, uh, say, look at me, look at me. I'm not a three-year-old on a tricycle anymore. Uh, it's my responsibility as a person with some ethics and some perspective and some life experience and some actual knowledge to use that talent beneficially to other people. A lot of people are voiceless. Uh, there's a lot of queers that won't and can't speak out particularly gender queers, trans people, uh, people who don't fit the gender binary. I identify with that community and it's not, I'm not going to speak for other people, mind you. I'm not going to speak for other people. I can articulate some arguments for, in favor of civil rights, in favor of respect and dignity. Uh, for instance, an atheist decided to put up a picture to defame Muhammad. You know, you're not supposed to sh show pictures of Muhammad. And it was a person with a full beard wearing some sort of turban-like thing and a mini skirt and high heels. And the atheist laughed and laughed and laughed about that. And I thought it was horrible because it plays into the stereotypes about trans people and genderqueer people and the uh, transphobia and the gender phobia and it of course enforces to Islamic people that the gender binary is the only way to be that there has to be strict gender segregation and it wasn't fair to genderqueer people 
who may actually dress like that. Should we not have the right to walk down the street without ridicule and scorn? So it enforced a mindset that leads to violence and abuse. People of color, I am of mixed ancestry and I don't pass up myself off as a Native American or African American because I was raised to think I was white. I was raised in a white culture, whatever that means. The assumption is that I am white. I don't know what it's like on the reservation. I don't know what it's like to be an urban Indian except for my friends. I don't know much about, um, I know a lot about the civil rights movement, but I don't know much about contemporary African American culture. I see it in, uh, as, as a diaspora. I see all these communities as a diaspora. You can't really point to one person and say that person represents. <coughs> but there are issues that are underrepresented on YouTube. For instance, Native American women fighting for the right to get Plan B, the so-called morning after pill. And they're really struggling with the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the uh, Indian Health Services to be able to have access. Uh, it's, you can have to travel 50 miles to get to a pharmacy. It can cost $50. A lot of people don't have cars. A lot of people don't have roads. A lot of people don't have electricity. So being forced to carry a pregnancy um, that's the result of rape is a real issue in Native America. And... It's an atheist issue. Why aren't contraceptives and um, Plan B available to women? And what does that mean as an atheist? What does that say about theism? Theism and its influence on policy. Uh, people with disabilities. A lot of slurs get used. Um, I'm going to do something about that soon. Anything that ends with TARD. Why are people with developmental disabilities singled out for stigmatization? Why are people with mental health issues singled out for stigmatization? We didn't do anything to you. If you don't like somebody's um, uh, argument, you can find a much more articulate way to address it than to call the person crazy or retarded. Um, schizophrenic Queen mentioned that she had gone to the Reason Rally. Unfortunately, her iPad, iPhone, whatever, croaked. So she didn't bring home any video, but she said it really concerned her uh, that so many people are calling religion a mental illness. And religion is not a mental illness. Religion is uh, mass propaganda. It's uh, a form of thinking that's outdated and outmoded and hasn't been questioned and is excused as tradition. There's a lot to say about religion but it's not a mental illness. Some people involved in religion enhance the symptoms of their mental illness with the use of religion. And why isn't the atheism community talking more about uh, mental health issues? Why don't we question the medical profession? Is it because they're scientists? Because psychology and psychiatry are pretty unscientific and are prone to huge amounts of abuse of a very vulnerable population that cannot stand up for itself. So I need to speak up about these issues. <coughs> Schizophrenic Queen, also in the same video, I'll link it in the underwear, uh, spoke of being at the Reason Rally and having people come up to her and recognize her and uh, say that she has made a difference. Now, as a person with disabilities living in poverty, I really resonate with that. Um, I don't think that vlogging extemporaneously on my personal experiences is counterproductive to that, but I think there's a lot more that I can do. Like I said, I'm a good writer, and I need to focus my attention more on solution-driven production. This is a wonderful medium that we have here, and we have the ability to reach each other across all sorts of cultural and national and economic and social barriers and I need to take responsibility for that and um, when I look at YouTube videos the people that I like have scripts they have humor they have uh, they're articulate they're very articulate now I can be it just takes practice and self-discipline 
they can articulate an argument clearly and concisely and with a great deal of humor and creative language and um, Hatate One, Bob Smearfack, uh, oh, I'm going to leave people out, Goxter, uh, Jason with a D, um, really funny YouTubes uh, and really compassionate and loving YouTubes that are ruthless and merciless in their analysis and their critique of religious issues and their impact on the society, but they're brilliantly produced. Grappling Ignorance always reads from a script. In fact, he publishes his script in his description bar. Uh, he's not funny necessarily, but boy is he bright. People like that. I've left a lot of people out. I apologize. So articulation and humor solutions. I don't want to just sit around and bitch and whine about, well, the Bible says that Lot slept with his daughters. Okay, that's true. Uh, there's a lot of people that are involved in religious communities because they don't know they have an option. They don't know there's an alternative. If you're just going to call them names, they're not going to see atheism as an alternative. So my thing is about finding solutions about... Uh, I was a fundamentalist Christian. How does one extricate oneself from this really insulated, high-pressure community of superstition and fear and guilt and begin living in the solution? We have so much to offer as atheists about personal responsibility, about the awesomeness of life. Excuse me for using such a cliche word. So... I'll leave the analysis of biblical stuff to people who want to do that, but I am so done with the Bible. I I've got it all memorized. I carried around Bibles with me. You know, I was a, a seminary student and I, feminist exegesis, uh, all, all that stuff, not just of uh, uh, the Christian Bible, but the Torah, the Quran, so on and so forth. I just don't have the patience for it anymore. In fact, when I moved into this trailer, you know, I had to get rid of a lot of my stuff because I just didn't have room for it. One of the first things to go was my whole bookshelf of Bibles. Gone. And concordances. It's online. If I need to, I'll get online. But I'm not really... Let let people who have the energy, the talent, and the time for, for that do it. I'd rather talk about the impact on social policy of the mindset of the misinterpretation of uh, theological principles. Because what's going on now, it ain't spiritual. And optimism. It's real easy to get crabby and angry and cynical and it's real easy. And depressed. They're all symptoms of depression. And angry. Oh, I get angry. But it has to be proactive anger. I have to be able to focus and articulate that anger into something that's a solution. Let's see. I want to do videos on my personal experiences as well. Not just topical uh, social commentary type stuff. But my personal experience has a lot to do with social issues. For instance, I'm heavily into sustainability and um, uh, self-sustaining projects like gardening uh, frugality. Uh, do it yourself, uh, like that one pint of cream that made 20 something meals and with all the ingredients combined I ended up with 20 something meals for under $10 and they're nutritious and they're wonderful. So those sorts of things, how to, how I don't participate in consumerism. This little dress for instance is one of the only factory things I own. My work clothes are usually factory stuff because I'm going to get them dirty and mess them up. I don't care. But I have a wonderful wardrobe of handmade stuff, hand embroidered, beautiful, beautiful clothing. And I didn't pay hardly anything for any of it. And I'd like to show you how. I need to talk about atheist blind spots, like the thing with people with disabilities, about calling people crazy and retarded. There are other such things, the blind spot about feminism. There are things that atheists do on YouTube. I'm not saying all atheists, of course, but some of the people that I see on YouTube where they're in denial about emotion, for one thing. They don't see the need to articulate the emotional life of, of the human being. We're animals. We have physiological responses to things. We have emotions. And how that interfaces with the rational. 
And then until unless we get over that denial and really look at who we are as thinking animals, as the universe conscious of itself, we're going to fall prey to some pretty foolish mistakes, uh, temper tantrums, verbal abuse, uh, the cynicism. That's, that's because the emotional and the intellectual aren't being integrated in a holistic way. Excuse me for using the word holistic, but you know what I mean. I think my experience as a woman who was expected to be emotionally articulate and literate, but not necessarily intellectually articulate and literate, I think my experience as a woman is useful in this conversation, maybe. I see a lot of people who are very popular because they rant and scream and denigrate and humiliate. And that makes it may make them feel better. It may make other atheists feel better. Like, yeah, they're picking on us. But there's a bunch of people out there that are probably atheists and don't know it. Uh, who probably have a capacity for reason. It was a reason rally. Not a Christians or crazy rally. Reason. We're not taught reason in school. It should be a fundamental course. Maybe we can teach it by self-publishing, but in useful and constructive ways. So that's where I'm going. I'm producing one soon on uh, the blind spot about calling people crazy because uh, I've been wanting to do that for some time, but you know, the stigma of being mentally ill or brain having brain injuries or being developmentally disabled, the stigma is so strong and I didn't want to deal with everybody's stereotypes and presumptions. I didn't want to deal with the fact that people would say, well, she has brain injuries. We don't have to take anything she says seriously because she's nuts. So I let the stigma silence me. I think that was a bad mistake. I think I have really useful stuff to say. I get little private messages from people with behavioral health challenges all the time. I mean, on a regular basis, it's not like they're piling in, but people tell me on a regular basis that what I'm saying about dealing and grappling and facing my life has been useful to them. I'm 55 years old. I didn't get much formal education because there wasn't any money. And because of my poverty, I had to move so often. It's real hard to form attachments to individuals and institutions when you're moving, 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 moving. And remember, the internet's been around, for me anyway, for less than 20 years. Now I'm able to reconnect with people that I've known my whole life and reestablish my connections and bonds with them. But for a long time, I was rattling around out here all by myself, getting chased from pillar to post, trying to keep a roof over my head and trying to keep people from killing me. So it's been really hard to establish roots, to make a change in things. And this self-publishing medium that we're engaged in. That's the other thing. I'm going to beef up my website. I talked to the guy who hosts my domain and um, I'm going to be beefing up my website So and my blogs. So expect to hear a lot more about that. Because I don't expect to get paid for any of this. Be nice, but I don't expect to get paid for any of this. <coughs> Although by establishing a decent portfolio, which I really do have, it's just scattered. Almost died last summer. Everything got scattered. So I'm organizing everything from the inside to the outside. Everything's getting reorganized. I even had trouble finding a pen so that I could make these notes. I had trouble finding my little steno pad. So I'm cleaning up and brushing off because you people don't know me you people know me in crisis and you know me in du under duress mm, i'd like you to know me a little better i think i may have something useful to offer i've got some life experience i've got some skills and some resourcefulness and like i said i've got some talent for writing if i just stick to it let me know if you have uh, topic ideas that you would like me to discuss. Uh, 
or any questions about me or my channel or you'll still hear weasel singing occasionally that kind of thing but I don't want to waste people's time I don't want you to click on a link to see something silly and useless okay thanks a lot for your time where's the logging off button bye